Good morning, Micah 7-7. Today is day one of three in our lessons on fasting. Today, we will be covering denying the flesh. I know, it's not an easy topic, nor a fun one. Today's lesson is meant to equip you to thrive like Daniel in today's Babylon. Our theme for January is seven steps to move from surviving to thriving. And just like the ladies who have gone before me and the ones who will follow me, we are moving to a thriving mode intentionally and desire to equip you to intentionally do the same. Because who doesn't want to thrive? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober. I'm going to say the word for sober means in complete control. Be in complete control and vigilant because the devil, as a lion, seeks whom he may devour. The devil knows one very important fact. How you see yourself determines how you will conduct yourself. But God, Psalm 73, 26 says, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is my strength and my portion forever. What a promise. I love cookies. Thank you, Sister Darla, for tempting me. Cookies are my weakness. So, I have a choice. Now, when I look at Psalm chapter 121, 1 and 2, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Now, I know that that may seem a little far-fetched from loving cookies, and the Lord helping you. But as I told you, cookies are my weakness. So I have a choice. I can indulge or abstain. For me, there's no really in between because once I taste them, I want more. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience a race that is set before us. Now we know if we indulge on things of the world, like cookies, it would be hard to run a race, especially run a race with patience. So we have to make a decision today, indulge or abstain. Let's talk about the word indulge. It's an unrestrained action. And we're gonna say according to eating for this lesson today, unrestrained eating. Is it possible that we rely on food more than we rely on God? Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says, To turn to God with all of your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. Lisa Terkurst says, Eating in its proper context is not a problem. But when pleasure becomes unrestrained, there is a problem. So let's go to Psalm chapter 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. Whether unrestrained eating is your weight or sin, we are still instructed in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to lay it down. Daniel was able to lay it down for three whole years in order to remain free from the Babylonian identity. If we want to lay down the identity of this world, and pick up the identity of Jesus, we're going to have to lay aside every weight, not just a sin, but those things that weigh us down. One of my daily prayers is, God, create in me a hunger and a desire to please you greater than I've ever had before. Ladies, we must fast. We must lay aside food in order to be hungry for more of God. It's hard to hunger for God when you are full of food or full of things from this world. Why did Esther fast? I find that Esther fasted with a purpose. She had something she wanted to accomplish. But we're studying Daniel right now, and I'm asking you, why did Daniel fast? In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, we will find that Daniel purposed in his heart to fast to not partake of the king's meat, or the things of Babylon, if you will. By fasting or denying the flesh, 
he was brought into favor with the kings and his authority. Fasting is a place of humility. What God has done for us is very easy to talk about. But what God requires of us is more of a challenge to discuss. That's why today's topic is a little bit challenging for me. Because when God requires something of you, you are held accountable to that, especially when you speak about it. In the book, Living Among Lions, the Benham brothers made a few very valuable statements. Daniel was able to deny his flesh of the king's food and deflect the king's praise, which was humility, because he was in a genuine relationship with God. That's what I want. In all likelihood, Daniel was taking a stand against the quote-unquote total program of assimilation as others have done before us and since. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 12, it tells us that Daniel trusted God. He and the three Hebrew boys were given permission to prove that their God, by denying their flesh, remember, they were called to separation, not isolation, as Sister Darla so wonderfully put. Also in Daniel chapter 1, verse 17, because of Daniel's trust and sacrifice, God gave him knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and understanding in all visions and dreams. Do you want to obtain those things? I know I do. Then we must abstain from the things that keep us distracted. The purpose for this 21-day fast is to deny the flesh and to be in favor with the Almighty, to see through His eyes what He desires for me to do and who He desires for me to be. It's to unify as the body of Christ. One mind and one accord is what He's asking us to be. It's ushering in the Holy Ghost, and I believe that unity can do just that. If today you are wondering if you can make it for the next 12 days in this fast, you can. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13 says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying to thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Proverbs chapter 12, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So ladies, let's get up. Let's wash our face and speak life. You can do it. I can do it. Together, we can do it. Let's pray. Almighty God, we seek you today because we are stepping into a place that is outside what our flesh can do alone. We need you today. We need you to strengthen us to be greater than we've ever been before. Not for the praise of men, but for your glory. God, as we deny our flesh, help us to take up our cross and follow you. You were able to fast, therefore we are able to fast if we will but focus on what you want us to do and not what on our flesh wants us to do. I desire, Lord Jesus, for your strength and for your power and for your glory to rest upon us, that we will be victorious in this last day as we are living among lions. In today's Babylon, our country is at a place that we need you so desperately. So hear our cry, answer our prayer, and know that we want to draw closer to you. We want your help. We need your guidance, Lord Jesus, and there is nothing that we can do without you. So we trust you that you will hold our hand and that you will help us not to fear and that you will be our help. I love you, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for it today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that sustains us. Give us a hunger for more of you, less of the world and more of you. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I am looking forward to hearing from Sister Diana Grizzle tomorrow on Cutting Away the Flesh.